for the last uh, session. You're good? Okay, thank you so much. So it's a great honor for me to introduce uh, Dr. Robert Kyle of the Mayo Clinics. And uh, Dr. Kyle is uh, one of the nesters actually of uh, all the knowledge that we have about uh, Waldenstrom's uh, macroglobulinemia. And he will share with us uh, some of his experience uh, also in patients with familial Waldenstrom's and he will also talk a little bit about secondary malignancies. Thank you, Dr. Kyle. Well, it's uh, always, uh, we always keep our president very busy here. He helps me get up on the stage. I had uh, a knee, knee replacement surgery this summer, and I'm not yet uh, uh, back to normal, but uh, things are moving along well, my orthopedist says, but uh, I don't think it's going quite fast enough. I've been uh, asked to speak about the familial aspects of Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia and its relation to other malignancies or cancers. I have no uh, financial relationships. This is a study from the Swedish uh, Cancer Registry and published by Dr. Ola Landgren in which he looked at 4,458 patients with Waldenstrom's uh, uh, or with monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance, MGUS or MUGUS, whichever you prefer, from this registry and then looked at the first degree relatives, that is parents, children, or siblings of the patients. And as you might expect in this cohort, the risk of uh, the risk of uh, MGUS, MGUS, was increased almost uh, threefold above what one would expect. The relationship with multiple myeloma was also increased at approximately the same level. Patients with uh, lympho, uh, uh, proliferative uh, lymphoma or Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia in first degree relatives was actually increased fourfold. Chronic lymphocytic leukemia was twice as common in the first degree relatives as one would expect, but non Hodgkin's lymphoma and Hodgkin's lymphoma in either the young persons uh, or the older persons was not greater than one would expect. <clears throat> uh, Dr. Landgren went on to look at those patients who had an IgG or an IgA AMGUS and found that uh, in this situation the frequency of MGUS was increased four times above what one would expect, multiple myeloma about three times, and uh, lymphoplasmacytic uh, uh, lymphoma or Waldenstrom's uh, was increased uh, uh, 20 times. Chronic lymphocytic leukemia, on the other hand, was only mildly increased. <clears throat> he also looked at the 1,696 patients with an IgM AMGUS. And as you uh, uh, may or may not know, almost 20% of patients with AMGUS are of the IgM class. And here uh, he found that the Frequency of multiple myeloma was twice what one would expect on the basis of that population. 
uh, the lymphoplasmacytic Waldenstrom's three and a half fold increase and chronic lymphocytic leukemia, uh, a five fold increase. <clears throat> this is a paper from uh, Dr. Sigurdru uh, Christensen, who is now uh, at the University of Iceland. And he reported on over 2,000 patients with uh, lymphoplasmacytic lymphoma or Waldenstrom's. And here uh, finds that the type of first degree relatives, that is whether they're parents, siblings, or offspring, whether they're older or younger than 70 years, or whether they are male or female, have no difference in risks in, uh, uh, in these uh, various categories. In this study of the 2,144 patients, uh, 1500, over 1,500 of them had Waldenstrom's, 600 had lymphoplasmacytic lymphoma. And as you can imagine, the pathology is very similar. In fact, the bone marrows are indistinguishable. And of course, one would call it lymphoplasmacytic lymphoma if the physician failed to order a serum protein electrophoresis. So the pathology is the same. And uh, uh, the uh, risk of, uh, of uh, Waldenstrom's or LPL was increased uh, uh, considerably in this cohort. Patients with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma was increased threefold, chronic lymphocytic leukemia about three times greater than you would expect, but Hodgkin's disease uh, uh, was not increased, Hodgkin's lymphoma, uh, multiple myeloma was modestly increased, and MGUS was found uh, five times more common than one would expect on the population. He also looked at AML, which is acute myelogenous leukemia, or MDS, or myelodysplastic syndrome, which is the stage before developing acute leukemia. That was increased in the uh, relatives uh, 1.7 times greater than one would expect but chronic myeloproliferative disorders and chronic myeloid leukemia were not increased, and neither were patients who had solid tumors, breast, lung, prostate, colon, and that sort of thing. <clears throat> this is a study by Dr. Ocha from the uh, Dana-Farber in Boston. And uh, he looked at uh, 1,618 patients from 1973 to 2008 from the Dana-Farber and found that the increase of acute myelogenous leukemia was increased uh, fivefold, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma about the same, multiple myeloma similar at 4.4, and cancer of the colon and uterus, about twice expected, lung uh, minimally increased. And if one took all of the lymphoproliferative disorders, it was increased about fourfold, whereas if one looked at all of the solid tumors, the uh, standardized uh, incidence ratio was modestly increased. Uh, Dr. Trion, a decade ago, looked at 257 of his patients with Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia, or the relatives of uh, Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia, and found that the relative risk of Waldenstrom's in first degree relatives of patients with Waldenstrom's was increased fivefold. 
non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and multiple myeloma and chronic lymphocytic leukemia were all increased about three times one would expect. MGUS or MUGUS about double, whereas acute lymphocytic leukemia was really not uh, increased much, nor was Hodgkin's lymphoma. Dr. Castillo of uh, Dana-Farber has uh, looked at the SEER uh, data, which is a national collection of patients with malignancy. And looking at the data from 1992 to 2011, he found that the risk of, uh, of uh, all lymphomas in patients with Waldenstrom's was increased fourfold, myeloma fourfold, acute leukemia of all types three times, and when one lumped all of the hematologic malignancies, it was increased four times greater than what one would expect in a normal population. When he looked at thyroid cancers in this group of people, it was increased almost threefold. Uh, melanoma, and this is uh, malignant melanoma, not myeloma, and many patients, when, uh, when the physician mentions the term myeloma to the patient, the patient says, oh, I don't have any black uh, lesions on my uh, skin. And it's very easy to uh, confuse melanoma and myeloma. Cancer of the lung increased uh, modestly, uh, but breast and colorectal were not. And as you can see, all solid tumors taken as a group uh, was just minimally uh, above that expected. Uh, uh, Dr. Oha looking at patients at Dana-Farber from 1999 to 2016, that is patients with Waldenstrom's who did not have hematologic malignancies, uh, breast, colorectal, uh, lung and ovarian and prostate were really not much different than one would expect in a normal population compared to these patients with Waldenstrom's. Dr. Enrica Mora from uh, Milan, Italy uh, looked at 230 of her patients with Waldenstrom's and looking for second malignancies, she found a diffuse large B-cell lymphoma was increased eight-fold, uh, uh, myelodysplastic syndrome or the full-blown uh, situation, acute myelocytic leukemia was increased in a comparable fashion, brain tumors increased, uh, uh, thyroid, uh, in her experience, was increased almost five times greater than expected. Urinary tract uh, uh, malignancies, that would include the uh, kidney and uh, bladder, uh, double. Uh, breast and lung and prostate and uh, were modestly increased. Uh, the gastrointestinal tract, about the same. And when she looked at all of the cancers, uh, uh, they were 1.7 times that expected. <clears throat> uh, Dr. Trion reported uh, several years ago on 43 of his patients who had been treated with fludarabine plus rituximab for their Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia. And he found that three of these patients developed another type of lymphoma and three other patients developed myelodysplastic syndrome or acute myelogenous leukemia, both of which are uh, uh, more than one would expect. 
Dr. Carney, who uh, worked with Dr. Mary McMaster at the National Institutes of Health in Washington, did a questionnaire uh, survey of patients with Waldenstrom's looking for second malignancies in those who had been treated with fludarabine and found that uh, myelodysplastic syndrome or full-blown acute biologenous leukemia uh, was found in 10 percent of 176 patients with Waldenstrom's treated with fludarabine. Overall survival in these patients was less than a year. Dr. LeBlanc from Paris uh, did a large uh, uh, prospective uh, study on patients with Waldenstrom's and uh, uh, this included, uh, it was mainly Waldenstrom's, 339 patients, 30 plus 37 with marginal zone lymphoma and 38 with lymphoplasmacytic uh, lymphoma. And she found that in this study that had randomized patients to chlorambucil or leucoran, uh, that at six years there was a 20% rate of finding uh, uh, malignancies, second malignancies in patients with chlorambucil, and these second malignancies were mainly myelodysplasia or acute myelogenous leukemia. Patients in her hands had a smaller number of, or percentage of patients who had received fludarabine who developed a second malignancy. <clears throat> Another uh, uh, study uh, 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 along with uh, Dr. Stein uh, Grimson, uh, a good Icelandic name, uh, working with uh, Drs. Landgren and Dr. Christensen, <clears throat> looked at uh, over 2,000 patients with Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia and found that other lymphoproliferative disorders was modestly increased, uh, the same with multiple myeloma, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, chronic lymphocytic leukemia, and uh, lymphoplasmacytic lymphoma, or Waldenstrom's. And this is a uh, report from Dr. McMaster at the NIH, who, uh, who tells us about the number of patients uh, with Waldenstrom's in her cohort of families. She's been collecting data on patients with families with Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia, and she has three families that she has identified with uh, two members of that family involved. Uh, one had three members of the family, and she has five families that have four individuals, first degree relatives, with Waldenstrom's, and actually one with uh, uh, five patients in that uh, family with Waldenstrom's. Now, I do want to emphasize that she has been collecting these patients for between two and three decades, so this is something that is not at all common. And finally, just to put things in perspective, I want to emphasize uh, a little bit more about the real world. First of all, uh, we've just completed the first uh, uh, epidemiologic study of Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia and found a risk that's a little higher than what has been reported from the literature, which, is, which are not strictly epidemiologic studies. And in our uh, 
uh, uh, study, the figure was actually 0.57 persons per 100,000. In other words, if you live in a city with 100,000 persons, you would have uh, five patients or five persons who would have Waldenstrom's. Now, we talk about double the risk, and if one doubles the risk of Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia in this population of 100,000 persons, you have one patient with Waldenstrom's uh, every year. And if you stop and think for just a minute that there are a lot of other things uh, that we are at risk for, heart attacks, strokes, other cancers. And when you really look at the big picture, sure, we talk about two, three, four, five fold increase in risk. When you come right down to the numbers, uh, it's actually very small, and uh, you people, uh, just as myself, are at risk for, are at much higher risk for heart, stroke, and other cancers than you are, or than your family members are, to develop uh, Waldenstrom's. Uh, and even if it's quadruple risk, the risk increased fourfold, you're still only talking about two patients per year in a population of 100,000. So actually, uh, uh, from a real practical standpoint, uh, this familial aspect it's interesting, particular to us, there is a familial aspect, no question, but it's not the major problem of your relatives and your children. And consequently, when we see a patient with Waldenstrom's newly diagnosed or uh, or multiple myeloma who is newly diagnosed, the patient says, well, should I check my children for the protein abnormality in the blood? Because every patient with Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia or multiple myeloma has had an MGUS uh, monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance present in their blood prior to the diagnosis of Waldenstrom's or myeloma. Even knowing these numbers, we still tell the newly diagnosed patient with Waldenstrom's or myeloma is no, don't bother to have your children checked. And the reason for that is, is that the average age of a patient with Waldenstrom's is about 70 years. How old are their children? Well, the children are probably uh, uh, 40, 45 years of age. The incidence of Waldenstrom's is very low in that population. The frequency of MGUS is low, uh, 1% perhaps, uh, in those uh, uh, 40 to 45 year old people. And if one does find an MGUS, it is, there isn't anything that you can or should do as far as that abnormality is concerned, other than to follow it if you do find it. Secondly, uh, uh, you do nothing, there's no treatment for it, certainly at this time or in the foreseeable future. Uh, we may well come to the day when an MGUS is recognized and one can, quote, destroy that mini tumor, that little itty bitty tumor, then uh, one would have, quote, cured 
Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia, multiple myeloma, and a number of other related uh, 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 problems. But we are not there yet, and this brings up the point of the research that Guy talked about a little earlier here. We're trying to know more, learn more about this, uh, about this situation. And then thirdly, the parent's child who has the MGUS, the parent, the patient uh, with the disease would feel very guilty. And uh, this is something that I transmitted to my son or my daughter, and they'd feel very badly. Uh, psychologically, it would be not good for anyone involved. And so, in short, uh, we do not recommend uh, screening a population for MGUS at this point in time. It's uh, certainly possible that we will change this recommendation as time goes on, but as of today in 2016, uh, don't look any further. And with that, I thank you for your attention, and uh, we'll look forward to your questions uh, uh, later this afternoon. Thank you.